Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Kimfish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing the second attempt on my How to Breed Neon Tetris series. Basically, if you guys haven't already checked that one out, there'll be a link up here. You guys can go through and watch that one. Basically, I used a different method to breed these guys and I was successful, but I didn't get as many fry as I wanted. So hopefully today, we're gonna to be trying to get quite a few more fry. I'm gonna be using some of this stuff to try and uh, get a few more eggs and leave the parents in there for a bit longer and get them to spawn a bit longer and also get less eggs eaten. So. Hopefully this will give me quite a bit more fry. You guys can kind of like pick and choose between which method you want to use. This method I think is going to work a little bit better and I hope you guys find it's really enjoyable to watch and really entertaining and you guys learn a few things. But without any further ado, let's get started. So in the last series we used this little container to spawn our adults and get the eggs and then we used this container to also hatch the eggs. So there's actually still a little fry in here from the last breeding series which are growing up a little bit more before I decide to move them to their own separate container. So there's plenty of them in here. They're still getting fed and all that kind of stuff there's only about 10 to 15 of these guys and that's definitely not enough because I'm trying to breed these guys for a bit of profit and these guys will sell for under a dollar so we need to get quite a few more than that to make this worth our time so I've spent a lot of time working on these guys and I'm not in this for the money I really do enjoy breeding fish but obviously the end goal here is to make a little bit of money so that you guys can see how to breed fish for profit so in today's video we're going to be getting the eggs so what we're gonna to have to do we're gonna change the method a little bit here and we're gonna use some of this which is used for like knitting and crochet and all that kind of stuff I really can't tell you what this is called because you'll just find it in your like local craft store or whatever basically this is just like a plastic mesh and as you can see there's quite a few gaps in it and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a big cut of this and we're gonna line the bottom of this container and we're gonna put some suction cups on each side and kind of hold a platform there so we're gonna have a big layer of peat down the bottom we're gonna have a layer of this mesh above the peat on that kind of horizon there and then above that we're gonna have some java moss and then we can put our adults in they'll spawn in the java moss the eggs will fall through to the bottom and then we can take the adults out, but we can also leave the adults in there for a little bit longer. So we can leave them in there for like a couple of days. Then they can do a couple of spawns and we'll get a couple more eggs. And we're also gonna get less eggs eaten because the eggs are gonna fall through to the bottom before the adults can have time to actually just start to eat them and go to town on them. So this should get us some more fry. We're gonna set up some peat today. We're gonna start pre-soaking that stuff so we can pretty much breed these guys straight away. And I'm also gonna show you guys exactly how to prep your Neon Tetra adults to make sure they get as many eggs as possible and are in breeding conditions. Okay, so the way you breed these guys in essence is basically to mimic a rainy season so here are my adults we've got 10 of them in here basically what we're gonna need to do is the pH in this aquarium at the moment is about a 7.5 and this is way way too hard to breed these guys the water needs to be a lot more acidic and it needs to be like a lot more black for these guys to think that it's been a big rain and they can start to spawn so basically these guys are from the Amazon and in the Amazon they like to spawn in the rain because it means that the eggs are gonna get pushed around and they're gonna have a better chance at surviving because there's gonna be heaps and heaps of food available as well after a rain it means that heaps of these guys are going to survive after they bred so basically we have to mimic that today and what we're going to do is we're going to lower the ph to about a 6.5 we're also going to drop the temperature to make sure that they think that it's rained and they should start to spawn for us so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use some peat moss so peat moss is a really really good way of lowering the ph basically it's just a really really acidic dirt you want to make sure that you get peat moss that is obviously organic you don't want anything in there that's going to be harming your fish so no chemicals and stuff like that it needs to be organic and basically you can just get this at any old hardware store you're going to want to put it in a bucket and let it soak so all the material starts to become waterlogged and falls to the bottom because you don't want the aquarium to be muddy you want it to be like a layer of this stuff along the bottom like i showed you before then this will basically bring the ph down significantly we can put our adults in the aquarium and we'll get a spawn Okay, so basically, as you guys can see, I've just soaked this in a bit of tap water and it's looking like a big old mess. But basically, you're gonna wanna leave that out for like a day to three days. It'll probably take for this stuff to sink and then we can add this to our aquarium. So I'm just gonna literally, I'm just gonna leave it outside my door here to the fish room it's just gonna sit out here until it's like all sunk and also by it sitting out here it's also gonna collect some natural organisms as well, well start to form in there and we'll the fry will be able to eat them so we also have to make our little mesh now Okay, so here's our piece of mesh. I've cut it to the perfect size to fit into our little box, which is 
over in the corner over there. Basically, this will just sit on top, like I said, and pretty much stop the parents from being able to eat the eggs. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys a couple of other things that are really, really important for breeding these guys. And that would be culturing some infusoria. So basically, these fry are so, so, so tiny. It's incredible how small these guys are that it's impossible to find like a commercial food or something like brine shrimp or microworms that can even fit in these guys' mouths. So you have to come to another kind of way of feeding these guys and that's using some infusoria. So as you can see, I've got three little jars here of infusoria. I'm using like yeast in these two and I'm using some boiled vegetables in this one. So basically, an infusoria kit's really easy to make. All you wanna do is boil some vegetables Vegetables and then put the vegetables in with some aquarium water and then literally let it sit for the next week to two weeks and you'll culture a bunch of little tiny microscopic organisms which sit in here and you can feed these to your fry. So this is very, very important. You can't not do this. You need to make an infusoria kit. It's super, super important because you're gonna need that to feed the fry. Basically, the way an infusoria kit works is the vegetables that you boil, and they'll be really, really soft and basically they're gonna just sit down the bottom of your jar and they're just gonna decompose. And what that's gonna create is a bacterial bloom. And these little tiny protozoans are gonna start to hunt and prey on those bacteria. And what's gonna happen is those little tiny protozoans are gonna start to reproduce like crazy and that's what we call the infusoria so you're gonna have huge huge amounts of this stuff in these little jars and those little protozoans are the perfect size to feed to our fry okay so conditioning neon tetras is really really not hard at all basically your main goal with these guys is to get as many of the females to be as fat as possible and full of eggs as possible so this is really really easy to do and the best way to do this is to feed them lots and lots of live foods and high protein foods so what do I recommend well I love to feed frozen bloodworms and frozen foods are really really good for conditioning neon tetras because basically frozen foods are full of protein and they're going to stimulate the fish to start to produce eggs so you can use frozen blood worms you can use frozen brine shrimp frozen daphnia frozen cyclops but even better than that is live food so i also like to feed heaps and heaps of baby brine shrimp to these guys and then they start to fatten up a lot so you'll see over the next couple of days, a lot of these females will become a lot fatter and a lot more plump and they'll start to become really full of eggs and that's when we're gonna take them out of here and put them into that little box. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend bloodworms because they can normally have a little bit of a hard time fitting these guys in their mouths. So bloodworms at the moment, because of this whole entire global pandemic, are kind of the only thing I can find to feed these guys as a staple, which is kind of unfortunate. There's no frozen brine shrimp or anything like that. That's all been panic bought. So I'm kind of limited to this, but I definitely recommend brine shrimp and daphnia and cyclops over bloodworms any day of the week just for these guys because you can see how small their little mouths are so that's just a little bonus tip from me but these guys again it's super super fat and they're going to start to get ready to breed okay so basically that's going to be it for the next three days there's not a lot more that we can do on this first day we have to let the peat settle and that has to sink and become waterlogged we're going to want to feed our adult neon tetras at least two to three times a day and feed them heavily in those protein foods and we're also going to need to let that culture of infusoria sit for the next week and a bit obviously to create some food for our fry so i'll catch up with you guys in a couple of days time when we will set up that tank and get these guys ready to start to spawn so i'll see you guys in a couple of days Okay, so it's been a few days now since the last time I saw you guys and I have set up the little container. It's all ready to go and it is now the night before I want these guys to spawn. So the way these guys spawn is they spawn in the morning. So early on in the morning when the lights first come on, these guys are gonna start to spawn. So basically when you're spawning these guys, what you wanna do is you wanna condition them the day before you want them to spawn and you wanna give them heaps and heaps of food the whole day, lots of protein, you wanna get them heaps of brine shrimp if you can, heaps of blood worms, all that kind of good stuff. And you wanna get the females super, super fat. And then basically what you're gonna do is very late at night, you can see it's all dark outside, all the lights are starting to turn off. And basically the night before, right Right before the lights turn off you want to take them and you want to put them in the box and you kind of want to just leave them in the dark until the next morning when you're going to turn the lights on and they should start to spawn so i've been giving these guys a lot of food they're getting really really fat i'm going to show you them now pretty much i'm going to fish them all out i'm going to put them into the box with a bit of moss and then we're going to come out in the morning and we're going to turn the lights on and they should start to spawn so let's go do that okay so here are the neons and as you can see quite a few of the females here are very very fat and they're going to be full of eggs so basically the way you sex these guys is the females tend to be quite a lot more round 
around and they also have a bit more of a bend in their neon line and then the males seem to be a bit slimmer. These guys are very, very hard to sex and there's no guarantee that what I tell you is going to be absolutely true. So basically, it's better just to breed them the method that I'm going with. So what we're going to do, I'm literally going to take all 10 of these guys and I'm just going to put them in there for a couple of days because now I don't have to worry about the ones that aren't breeding just sitting down there and eating the eggs because the eggs are just going to fall through. So we're going to take pretty much everyone out of here and we're going to put them into the other box and we should get quite a good spawn. So you can see just what the conditioning does. You can see how different the fish look. They're all fat and they're full of color. So I'm just going to fish them all out now. Okay, so here is what all the neon tetras look like the night before they have their spawn. So you can see some of the females here are quite fat and full of eggs. And the reason I'm getting this shot is because I'll show you guys tomorrow morning what they look like. They'll look a lot skinnier if they have spawned. And this is just a really good indication to know if they have spawned because these eggs are so tiny. So it's sometimes really, really hard to know whether you've had a successful spawn until you start to see fry. So if you can take a photo of them from the top and then take a photo of them from the top the next day, you'll definitely know because they'll be a lot more skinny, some of these fish, tomorrow morning. Okay, so now basically what we have to do is leave these guys in there overnight and then tomorrow morning I'm going to come and take that towel off and I'll turn the lights on and they should start to breed. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, so the next morning when I turned on the light, I sat down, grabbed a coffee and I had a look and recorded these guys. Now, I've tended to notice that in the first hour, nothing really happens with these guys. There's not much breeding and these guys just kind of sit around and they just become a bit more used to the environment that they're in. But then after an hour, normally the spawning starts. So what will happen is the males will court and they'll try and get the females to come over to the moss and then they'll breed and spawn with the females that way. Now, I did not see any of this happening this first morning. In fact, I saw absolutely nothing happening and this led me to believe that there was no spawning whatsoever and I had a few theories behind this. The main reason why I think is because there's far too many fish in the aquarium and it caused a lot of confusion. So there was 10 of them in there and there was a really, really confined space and it kind of looked like no one could really get started to spawn. So I was pretty disappointed. I don't think that I got any eggs and this led me to having to come to a new solution to get these guys to spawn. Okay, so it's currently like one o'clock in the afternoon now. So any morning spawning that these guys would have done would have already happened by now. Now this hasn't really worked the way I wanted it to. Basically the pH in here is six. The pH in the other aquarium is a 7.8 when I tested them. So there is definitely a sudden pH drop which would entice these guys to breed. So I do believe that there would have been some breeding but I'm really not too sure how much. But if we look down under here, one of the guys has figured out how to get under here. So I don't know if he's just been sitting down there and eating all the eggs as they've been breeding or if there was even any breeding behavior. Last time I bred these guys, I didn't put a whole group of 10 in. I put like five of them in and they were mostly females. So I did actually get some breeding. Now I don't know if because there's all 10 of them that they just decided not to breed. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna disturb the substrate. I'm just gonna leave it and pretend that there are eggs in there. What I'm gonna do is I've still got quite a bit of daytime left. I'm gonna take all the fish out and I'm gonna try and like not disturb the substrate as much as I can. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do a second spawn tonight. I'm gonna take the fattest female and the fattest male and drop them in here. Hopefully we'll get some eggs because obviously this is very annoying. So I do think this will work. I've just gotta find a way to figure out how this guy even got in underneath there so yeah very frustrating and I mean these things do happen when you breed fish so you kind of got to play it by ear Here are what the neon tetras look like the morning after now. So they actually don't look that much skinnier. So I'm not that hopeful that there's been any eggs. We're definitely gonna have to give this another go because I mean, that's just how it is when you breed fish. It's a living animal. You don't know what's gonna happen and you don't know how they feel. So let's get these back to their tank. Okay, so basically the first attempt with these guys didn't work. Look, that kind of happens all the time with fish. I'd be lying to tell you that every time was perfect. Basically, the plan is I'm going to leave these guys in here for the rest of the day. So this time we're going to try and do it a couple of different ways. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously I'm going to feed them really heavily for the next like 
10 hours and I'm gonna try and get them as fat as possible again. So like I'm gonna feed them a crazy amount of food. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the amount of Neon Tetris in that little breeding box. So I'm probably gonna pick one male and two females and then he can kind of choose between which female he wants to go for. We'll just play it by ear. I'm really not too sure how this is gonna go. A little bit disappointing, but we should still be able to get a spawn, no troubles. So here are the fish the night before. Now these guys, I only picked out five. I picked out three females and two males from what I can suspect them to be by on what they look like. As you can see, there's a couple out here that are really, really fat. So hopefully they spawn overnight. I'm really, really hopeful right now because I've been feeding them really heavily today. They're in for a good pH drop. So let's go take them to the aquarium. Okay, so now this morning was a bit of a different story to the last morning. So pretty much straight away, I saw some breeding behavior. So these guys took about 15 to 20 minutes to warm up and then the males were just straight into it. So the males were constantly courting and they were trying to get those females to come over the moss and then they would get the females over and they would spawn. And for the first time ever, I actually got a really awesome piece of footage of these guys spawning and there's just a big cloud of eggs going everywhere and then the eggs just fall through. So you can see that quite a few of the eggs actually get eaten by some of the neon tetris in the aquarium so they're pretty quick to just turn around and eat them up like a little bit of caviar but this is why we've got that little piece of mesh so they can't go down to the substrate and just easily pick them up so anything that falls through that mesh is instantly safe and can't be eaten so i got a heap of spawning these guys were going on for quite a long time i left them in there for about three to four hours just spawning and then when i started to see that they were just becoming a bit more normal and stopped spawning I decided to take them out. I was very, very happy that this method worked. Okay, so it's currently 12 o'clock in the afternoon and these guys have had about five hours to do all their spawning. And from what I can see, they've stopped any spawning behavior. So there was definitely a lot of spawning this morning. There was heaps of running around and I'm really, really happy with how this whole entire process has gone. I'm gonna take these guys out, give them a look from the top and then put them back into the other aquarium and give them a good feed. Okay, so now we just leave these guys in here for the next couple of days until they become free swimming. So it's very, very important to leave the light off. You don't want to have the light on at all because these guys are little black water fish and they are very sensitive to light. So it's better just to leave the light off. Now I like to leave it like this and occasionally I'll come back with my flashlight and have a look inside there to see what's going on. I've kept the temperature at about 21 to 22 degrees because I don't want it to be too hot. Otherwise the eggs will not have as good a hatch rate. Basically the only light they're going to get is the ambient light, which you can see here. So this is pretty much going to be it for the next couple of days okay so here are all the fish now after they have spawned and as you can see some of those females are definitely a lot skinnier so we've definitely got a few eggs I'm honestly not too sure how many I'm hoping quite a lot because then this means that I can use this method in the future to get quite a few more neons but I'm very very hopeful I think that a lot less eggs would have been eaten but pretty much that's gonna wrap this video up so thank you guys so much for watching it I really do appreciate it see you guys in the next one